Good day, viewers. It's another time of Bible study. We are trusting the Lord that the Lord will impact our lives and that His word will prevail. Bible said in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verse 20, that so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. We are praying that His word that will come to us in the course of today's discussion will prevail. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We continue our discussion on our theme for the year. The Lord God and the reign of peace. I think it's still in order to say once again, Happy New Year. You know, we are still in January and we are trusting the Lord that the Lord will make this year peaceful for us all. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our something says, means of God's revelation to humankind. Last week we considered dream. Today we'll be looking at verbal communication between God and human. How God communicates orally, verbally to us. We have in the studio our resource persons. By my right is engineer Nam De Kinsley Oje. He's a Bible study teacher, Anglican Church of the Resurrection, Dubai, here in Abuja Diocese. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome, viewers. And then by my left, also from the Anglican Church of the Resurrection, Dubai, is engineer Ovie Ajekbiede. He's also a Bible study teacher. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. And good day, viewers. God indeed will help us as we discuss together. In Genovia, sir, okay. First Samuel chapter 3, 18 to 14, you will help us read. That is our background text. Before then, let's go through our aims. Our aims today will be to discuss instances of verbal communications between God and human in the Bible. And then two, to expose the basis for hearing the voice of God. The basis, that for me is important. On what premise does God speak to a man? The Lord will help us to understand that basis. I encourage you to invite people around. Let's see briefly as we together learn at the feet of Jesus. First Samuel 3, 8 to 14. In Genevieve, sir. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 8 to 14. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. He arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be. If he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as as other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of every one who hears it will tingle. In that day I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows, because his son made them vile, and he did not restrain them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned by sacrifice or offerings forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, look at verse 13. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows. Because his sons made themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. Just maybe to veer off from our focus, but I see God also raising this matter in some of our homes. I don't know that which you know that your children may be perpetrating, and God is expecting you as a custodian, as a steward, to rise up in discipline and put them on the path of righteousness. I pray it will not come too late to the extent that God will begin to judge your household for the iniquity which he knows. God indeed will help us this year together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Introduction. Verbal communication is an oral, oral communication wherein the message is transmitted through the spoken words. The Bible has many records of God speak to his people in conversations. I mean, you see it all across the scriptures. Sometimes imagine how it was possible for men to define clearly, distinctly, that it was God who was communing. 
and speaking to them. In our study text, God spoke audibly to Samuel, but he mistook the audibility to be that of prophet Eli, that's human to human. However, he was able to receive God's message at the third approach. That we can see clearly from our text, verses 10 to 14. In our discussion today, we shall see that there are fundamental bases for effective communication from God to man, which includes our holy lifestyle or holiness. Study guide, Engineer Jesa. Explain what verbal communication of God with humankind in the context of our text and Exodus chapter 3, 13 to 14 means. You help us read that Exodus account, Exodus chapter 3, 13 to 14. That's God's encounter with yes. Moses. Yes. Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they said to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to, to you. you. So looking at this account, sir, and then of course our reference text, First Samuel 3, what is your understanding of God's communication to humankind, verbal communication with humankind, sir? All right. Now, uh, First, I must note that Samuel didn't see God physically. Otherwise, yeah. he wouldn't have you know, gone to meet Eli. But he had the, the voice, voice of God. Now, uh, Moses also, in this case, where you know, this was the burning bush, and eventually God appeared in the form you know, of an angel in that burning bush, Moses had a voice. Yes, sir. Which means that and uh, when we're looking at verbal communication in the context of our text, hmm. it means that uh, he's hearing God verbally, yes, sir. even without seeing him. Hmm. But his voice is so clear that anyone who hears will understand that this God speaking. Yes, sir. But not really see him like Samuel didn't see him. If he had seen him, like I said, he wouldn't have started going to him. Uh, yeah. That was the instinct. The voice of the Lord spoke. Engineer Vyasa. Yeah. Your understanding of verbal communication. You know, I would like us to understand the, the precedent we've set while looking at this when we started early in the year. How God reveals himself to us. We've looked at God revealing himself to us via the word of God. We've considered dreams the last time. And today, we're looking at God revealing himself via his spoken word. Your understanding of that, sir? Okay. The understanding I get is that it means that God can also reveal himself audibly by words that you can hear like Amen. a man is speaking Amen. just as i'm talking now you know like in the scripture it's what you read and you believe that that is the word of god yes and sir. then by faith you know that this particular word of god it is god speaking to me but we are now saying that god can also speak audibly hmm. that you will hear it even internally sometimes it could even be physically you hear it you have, as if somebody spoke, spoke to you to me. and you even be looking around to say who spoke you will hear it and you will now know that this is the word of God. So God also speaks physically, which we can hear. Awesome. And importantly, he may not be physically seen, but you will hear the voice and understand it and know that this is the, the God voice speaking. Of. Awesome. You know, in Jeremiah, the prophet's writing, he said, you will hear a voice from behind saying, this is the, the way, way to walk, walk, therein." So the voice of the Lord brings direction to a man. And you know, the year is just beginning. The direction you need to run the course of 2022 is in you hearing the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord also brings answers and solutions. Look at Exodus chapter 19, verse 19. I think that scripture is instructive for us. The Bible said, Exodus 19, 19, And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him by a voice. The voice of the Lord can bring answers, solution. That thing we are looking for. 
as you're setting out in the course of this year, when the Lord speaks, he brings answers your way. And our prayer is that that answer will come to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Engineers, you have to stay with you. Question two. Why was Eli unable to hear God's call? Okay. It's plain with 1 Samuel 2, 27 to 30, as well as chapter 3, 13 to 14. You help us read those quickly. And then okay. engineer G, Romans 1, 28. I will take 1 Corinthians and then we'll share in your thoughts. Sir. Okay. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 27 to 30. Then a man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Did I not clearly reveal myself to the house of your father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Did I not choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon my altar, to burn incense and to wear with effort before me? And did I not give the house of your father all the offerings of the children of Israel made by fire? Why do you kick against my sacrifice and my offerings, which I have commanded in my dwelling place, and honor your sons more than me, to make yourself fat with the best of all the offerings of Israel, my people? Therefore the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Far be it from me, for those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. esteemed. Okay. Chapter 3. And if we read chapter 3, 13 to 14. 1 Samuel chapter 3, 13. And it says, For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows. Because his sons make themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned by sacrifice or offering forever. Okay. In genealogy, sir, Romans 1.28. Romans 1.28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14, I read, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So why was it difficult? Why was Eli, though a priest, yeah. unable to hear God at that time? Looking at all these scriptures. Okay. Now, if you look at, I would just want to give a little background to Eli. He was a priest. Yes, sir. And let us remember that this boy Samuel we're talking about was, you can say, like a product of his prophecy or his prophetic yeah, ministry. Exactly. When the mother came and she was praying and praying and praying, I said, Woman, why are you looking as if you are drunk? Hmm. And he said, No, I'm not drunk. I'm asking for you. He said, Be it unto you according to what you're asking. And Samuel came. Hmm. And when they came again, remember, he also prophesied. And the woman had five other children. So he was a priest still doing exploits, kind of. But at this particular point in time, God chose to speak to Samuel and not him. Remember again that we saw where God sent a prophet to Eli to go and tell him and warn him. Now he is also speaking to Samuel. So you see that because God was not happy with Eli, because his children were doing those things that were not correct, mm. and Eli did not restrain them. Normally, you don't want to speak to somebody who you are not happy with. Mm. You want to, somebody is not in good terms with you. You have been telling him, do this and do this. The normal response would be, okay, since you won't listen, let me talk to somebody that will respond to me. Awesome. So maybe the Lord has been asking you to do a particular thing or has been instructing you and you keep disobeying. Yes, sir. It may come to a point where the Lord is saying, even if I tell him, he still will not obey. Meaning. Let me talk to somebody that will do what? That will listen to me. Normally, you want to talk to somebody that will respond to you, exactly. understand what you are saying, do what you want. So it's possible that the Lord, of course, had been warning Eli, speaking to him, but he didn't make any meaningful thing out of it. So at this point, it's time God decided to bypass him awesome. and turn to another person to tell him what he will do. And so one of the reasons why Eli will not hear God or God will not speak to Eli now is because God was not happy with him. Because he knew what the children were doing and he did not restrain, restrain them. them. You know, child of God, our brother is raising a very critical point. Mm. I don't know how long God has been speaking to you concerning that matter. I don't know how long. It will be a tragedy 
that will start to say, why you are still there in ministry? Heaven has bypassed you, and heaven is beginning to raise a Samuel. Stubbornness and disobedience will not take you far. God is raising that matter in genealogy. Okay. Uh, to add to what our brother has said, mm. uh, I can say that his link with God had been severe at that Awesome. Point. <laughs> had been caught up. And like you noted, God cannot continue with somebody who has severed his link, link. with him. Mm. Now, in some of the verses there, like uh, first somewhere uh, where we read, 2.29. It was so clear that the Bible stated that he kicked against yes. God. It said he kicked at God's yes. sacrifice. sacrifice. An offering. Yes. Amplified version put it that he trampled upon hmm. God's sacrifice. He treated it with contempt. Hmm. And when somebody is into such, you know, contempt, God cannot control that person, no matter who the person is. Whether the person is wearing color or is a, in the laity, God cannot continue with such a person. Awesome. Now, uh, there are other issues we noted in chapter 3, we read, verse 13. Uh, like, you know, they did not restrain his children. NLT put it that he didn't discipline mm. his children. Most of us parents today, if we don't discipline our children, they may end up becoming something else. And we can't blame God. Hmm. If God has decided not to speak to us because we honor these children more than God, hmm. like it's noted, then we don't blame God because He's God. And that's His nature. He can't continue with the man. Eli, like he noted, was he studied very well, groomed somewhere, but somewhere along the line. I don't know what happened. But there's a point I want to also note from that uh, first Corinthians chapter two where you read. He said he's no longer spiritual. Mm. You know, and when somebody's no longer spiritual, he said he's a natural, he's a, a natural man. Mm. And we can maybe see a lie being natural. Any natural person, no matter how far you're going with the Lord, can no longer receive anything God. from God. Awesome. And that's why God, like you know, the God is now looking for somebody else who will hear him. Because you can't mix oil and water and they mix together. Awesome. If they say to they will separate. That's why God can offer himself to somebody. A set up is not become spiritual. All right. Then the last passage you read in uh, Romans 1 to 8 was a debased mind, a reprobate mind, a mind that is no longer ready to receive God's instructions. God cannot have such a mind at all. You know, you know, God is doing awesome things. For me, this is coming at very auspicious time. This is the beginning of the year, and people are asking. Lord, where would you want me to go and settle? Which business do you want me to do this year? And you are struggling to hear clearly that God is leading you into it. There is no how you will hear him if your link with him has been severed. Yeah, yeah. That's what that scripture. Look at Eli, a priest. But look at verse 1 of that first Samuel. In his days as a priest, the Bible says there was no widespread revelation. He was there as a priest. But revelation was scarce in his days. And if you look at verse 2, Bible said, And it came to pass at a time, Why Eli was lying down in his usual place. He was lying down in his place. And his eyes had begun to grow dim that he could no longer see. You see a man, the picture of a man whose relationship with God is severed. He was lying down. He was not standing up. He was not watchful over the gates. Of Shiloh. That was why there was no revelation. Child of God, are you lying down where you are? You have to be spiritually standing, standing to discern what God is saying. God is still speaking, but it will take a man whose relationship with heaven is not severed. It will take a man who is not stubborn, who is committed to obeying God to hear whenever God speaks. We'll be back in a moment to continue. God bless you. Now streaming, now analyzing, now assessing, now discussing, now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you. ACNN is now streaming, discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all. Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities and our country. Welcome back. It's been awesome. Feasting. 
on this mount. The Lord indeed has helped us. And like we prayed when we are starting, we are trusting that over and above everything, that the word of the Lord that will come to us will prevail in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be reminded that I've been in the studio with our resource persons, Engineer Ovie Ajekbiyede and Engineer Nam the Kinsley Oji. Thank you. I mean, this is awesome. Having two engineers dissecting the word of the Lord. <laughs> awesome. God is faithful. He's raising men in his army. We'll continue from where we've left off. We look at question three. What are the basis for hearing from God in genealogy? You help us with 1 Samuel 2, 11, and then verse 18, as well as chapter 3, verse 1a. In genealogy, Psalm 24, 3 to 4, and I'll take Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Viewers, I'd like you to pay close attention because this is application now. You are struggling to hear God. What are the basis for a man who wants to receive from God, who wants to know that God is speaking to him? What are the basis? Please. It's important we pay close attention to what God will be saying to us now. First Samuel 2. Okay, first Samuel 2, verse yeah. 11. Mm -hmm. Then Elkanah went to his house at Rama, for the child ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. Mm -hmm. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. For Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child, wearing a linen ephod. And then chapter, chapter 3, 3, verse, verse 1a. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Thank you very much, sir. In Genius, Psalm 24, 3-4. Psalm 24, 3-4. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. And then, Mark, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place, and there he prayed. Now, engineer, sir, the basis for a man to hear God, to hear the voice of the Lord, for God to come with a man, friend to friend, what does that man need to do to have this kind of experience? All right. If I limit myself to our texts also, uh, First Samuel chapter two. Yes, sir. Verse uh, eleven, verse eighteen. Then chapter three, uh, verse one uh, a. Yes, sir. We noted that they were talking about the boy Samuel mm. ministered before the Lord. The Lord. Hmm. He ministered. He ministered. Now, uh, again, uh, well, NLT put it that that ministration is serving. Yes, he Lord. served before the Lord. So we can use interchange the two ministration and serving Serve before, the, before the Lord. Now, for somebody, you know, to be the one of the basis for hearing God, it means the person must be serving the Lord. Yes, sir. Ministering to the Lord. Now, uh, what comes to my mind here is uh, Stephen in Acts chapter six. You know, when the issue of serving tables came up. The apostles were saying, we choose for you men who can serve tables. Someone like Stephen was picked among the men who serve tables. Mm. But we saw that in the course of serving or ministering through tables, we saw what happened. He became the first Christian martyr. Mm. Good means that is as we serve in every capacity, particularly in Anglican communion where we belong. Yes, sir. There are many areas we can serve. Let's not neglect any aspect. And we must be diligent, yes, we sir. must be sincere, we must trust the Lord at, in ministering. I'm sure someone was doing it as a duty. Who had to do? And God eventually saw something in him and made him a prophet whose words cannot fall to the ground. I think he's in chapter 3 verse 18, that yeah. none of his words word. ever failed. Ah, what a prophet. Hmm. So child of God, this is interesting. Service is a basis for a man to hear God. As you serve and you, as you set your mind this year to serve the Lord, God continually will bring his mind your way. Sir, your take on this as okay. we also delve more into some of the other issues. Yes, serving is very important because and it requires commitment. Yes, sir. When you are serving somebody, you are committed to that person. I want us to understand that it's not everything you hear that you are communicating with. You hear a lot of noise. You hear a lot of so many things. 
that you are hearing so many background noise. It does not mean you are communicating. Mm. Remember, we are looking at verbal communication, communication. between God, God and, and human. Man. So that you are hearing many things does not mean you are communicating with them. But in the place of service, there is a deliberate relationship, commitment to service. So you can hear God and he speaks to you. Also, we also need to note that from what here we read in um, Mark chapter 1, where is it now? Verse 35. Yes, verse 35. We saw that Jesus went telling the money to go and pray. Hmm. One other place where we hear God is in the place of prayer. Yes, sir. That is another place where we hear God. But you see, many times we are too busy in our prayers. Hmm. What do I mean? We are talking of verbal communication between God and humans. If we should look at our prayer sometimes, we talk and 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 talk. And talk. Yes, sir. We don't even pause to hear the reply, what God is saying. You know, what is important is not really your request, but the answer to that request. Yes, sir. So why are you making a request without even making any commitment to get a response for your request? <laughs> so at the end of the day, it becomes, you know, our prayers many times, it's like we are... We Monotonous, are, just one way. Even, you know, our prayers should not be incantations, mm. but should be conversations. Yes, sir. I don't know if you see people doing incantations. They talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk as if they are doing a charm. Mm. No. But when we go in the place of prayers, it should be a conversation. And when you speak to God, you wait, He speaks back. Then you take that response, you act on it, and then there is progress. Or when you are talking to God, you understand His mood, understand what He wants. That yes. depends on how you present your matter. Yes, and then sir. it becomes mutual conversation. But when it's not like you are just coming with a list, talk and talk and talk and talk in Jesus' name, amen, and you walk away, then you will not you, hear you, God. You won't hear God. They are too busy in that environment. You will not hear God. Praise More so, even God. when this God already knows even all of your requests, even before, even before you, you present it, like he tells us in Matthew. I mean, this is key. You know the, that in that same Mark 135, yes, sir. we should know that Jesus Christ left a place where others were and went awesome. to a solitary place yeah. and their praise. I see that as the issue of her quiet environment. Exactly. Personal quiet time had to be where no, there will be no disturbance to, between us and God if we must hear him. Then the other scripture we read in uh, Psalm 24 verse 4. See, we must have clean hands. Exactly. Clean hands awesome. that does not stand. A pure heart. That yeah. is not contaminated. Awesome. If somebody has a contaminated heart, Hearing God won't be possible be because, because there are they so struggle. many things that are, you know, in there. Blocking the yeah, channel. The channel will not flow because there are impurities that must be taken care of. Otherwise, you can hear. Then there should be nothing in between us and God. Mm. Whatever it is, like in the case of Eli, his sons, you know, we are wayward. I couldn't do anything about that. Whatever it is, it could be a child God has given to us graciously. Anything, it could be position, it could be status, it could be whatever. Yes, sir. Anything that God spots and points to it that this thing is a hindrance, we must do away with it. Awesome. We allow that to hinder awesome. our channel. flow, our channel with God. I think to, to also drive it to when you say this struggle because of the things that encumbers our life. I mean, this is also a timely warning. Mm. This is the age of information overload. Most times we are busy on social media we are busy do, with our phones that sometimes we don't give well enough time to hear god speak to us and for that man that will run far with god this year you must create time jesus that will say while it was yet dark he went to a solitary place and prayed environment also counts that environment that so to say let me leave it Quote, I don't quote, there are environment that suppresses the voice of the Lord. Yeah. When the, the Lord is even speaking, because you're in a particular environment, I mean, that voice is being suppressed. It, 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 you can't be in a disco hall, jumping up yeah. and down to that, that, things, and then you are saying, you can't be saying, holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. Those are the things. So, child of God, make sure that God will locate you in an environment where his voice can come to you direct this year. In our sense, clear and sound. Not us in that same something of us for they want us against falsehood. Yes, sir. Anybody who is not real, yeah. fake, he can't, can't hear, hear from God. God. And we have a lot of them in, yeah. in within the Christian food this year. A lot of fakes around. You see, and you must draw near and settle down. You know, you know, you see these days, somebody saying he's in a prayer meeting, put phones on his ear, he's driving. 
I mean, <laughs> what are you hearing? What the, yeah. You know, so if you want to pray, pack your vehicle, stop what you are doing, communicate with your father. God is a great king. Mm. How do you talk to your boss in the office? You are talking to him and you are washing plates or you are doing... Even you, you may even be doing something for him and talking to him. It looks disrespectful. Exactly. Stop what you are doing. Talk to him. Finish that matter. Hear what he has to say. Then yeah. go back to what you are doing. Awesome. So that if you don't draw near and clear yourself, free your heart from all those sin, burdens, those things that can easily distract you, put them away, take care of them, then you have a clear mind to communicate with the Father. You won't hear him. Awesome. You won't hear him. And then, uh, brother, you talked about uh, service as an avenue for us to hear God. I want for ministration. To, for ministration. Yeah. I would like to emphasize on it. There are many arms within our communion wherein you can serve God wholeheartedly. Not because you are looking for a particular thing, but because you just loved the Lord. Because you just want to serve Him for who He is. In that place as you serve, God will bring men that His voice will be coming to you. Instruction, your spiritual fathers, leaders that will be guiding your life so that your walk with God this year will be smooth. And I also tell you, service is also a vehicle for elevation in this kingdom. When you have learned to serve, you are positioning yourself for God to elevate you. And I pray that God will elevate us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Question four. Is God still speaking to people in our generation? I mean, let's, let's, yes or no first before we move to the B part of it. Is God still speaking in this age? Yes. Yes. In this age, not in, you know, some people may say he spoke in Bible days. Is God still speaking in? Yes. And we are saying yes, very strongly. Explain from personal experience. If no. If yes or no. Just answer from personal experience and why. We have said yes now. So from your personal experience, how? God speaks to a man. You know, like you say, you don't see him physically, but you hear his voice. He gives instruction. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 that he wakened, my, he wakened me morning by morning and he wakened my ear to hear like the tongue, uh, and gives me the tongue of the learned. Yes, sir. So you hear him. When he speaks, he gives direction. Yes, sir. There are cases where, in fact, there was a case where my wife was telling me she heard a voice. Somebody told her something. And she was looking around and was, ah, who spoke now? But there was nobody in the room. Hmm. And obviously, it was the Lord that was speaking. Awesome. You will hear it audibly as if somebody was talking to you. Hmm. Sometimes you can see somebody put his hand on you and say, Tapped you. Yes, you, ah, who touched me? It has happened many times. So yeah. God speaks even in our generation. He speaks even now. Once we are attentive At and, we, and we clear our mind of those things that can, that can distract us, we can hear him whenever he speaks. I think I have some personal experience to share in that regard. Before I come to you, one was the issue of this tapping now. Yeah. I remember the particular night that I've said my mind that around 4 a.m. I need to be up for a particular task. Yeah. Deep in my sleep, when it was around that time, it was as if somebody physically came and pulled yes, me. Yeah. And I looked at the time, it was almost time for me to... And I saw help from God for me to be able to embark on that. There's another experience I will share, but let me share your thoughts, sir. All right. God speaking to a man in this generation. All right. And I think I'm also part of this generation we're talking about. Yes, sir. And we're talking about sharing personal experience. Let me just share an experience, you know, of... I said, I said, yes, God speaks. Yes, sir. This generation. And when I was uh, looking, getting to the point when I'll get a wife to marry. Yes, sir. You know, I he heard clearly from God the name of my wife yeah. to be there. Mm. God gave me the yeah. name, one of her names. Yeah. So, and I woke up like in that kind of trance or dream or trance, and it was so clear. Yes, sir. Now, you know, it's like a discussion between you and somebody. And I said, God, who is this? You know where he took me? It was Proverbs 18.22. Yes, sir. I said, I know it. That was early morning, one Saturday morning. Mm. I said, I know it. He said, who so findeth their wife? He said, stop. Go and find her. I'm telling you the reality about my life. Yes, sir. Now, I said, God, how should I start finding her? Okay, I started checking. Eventually, anyway, it's a story for another day. But eventually, uh, by Monday, this was on a Saturday. Yes, sir. By Monday, I had located her. 
Lo and behold, we've never had any cost to meet at all. Mm. I'm talking about more than two decades now. That yes. is still like, you know, it's starting. Yeah. That's God's speaking. Awesome. It was so clear. Awesome. God. But again, can I also note that, you know, uh, during the time of, in the Old Testament, we know that if God would come yeah, through his spirit or different forms, mm -hmm. like the burning bush in Moses' case, his spirit would go back. But in the New Testament, Jesus Christ promised us and gave us the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Every child of God who is correct child of God carries Holy Spirit everywhere he is. Which means uh, the way God speaks now, even today, he's speaking to us even here because the Holy Spirit part of him exactly. is in us. Exactly. He indwells there. Therefore, if, like I've already noted, if we are attentive to him, and we're not choked up with so many cares of this world, he's still speaking. Awesome. Now he's in there. I don't need to go and look for more. He must not stand in front of me like one big masquerade if I hear God is speaking. He speaks. Awesome. Awesome. And there's something striking, very instructive in that Samuel account, First Samuel chapter 3. Mm -hmm. I'd like us to look at verse 7. As we try to tie today's discussion of 3.7. The Bible said, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of God yet revealed to him. Perhaps that explained his struggles. The first time he ran to Eli, the second time he ran, until the third time that the priest maybe experientially knew that it was God speaking to him and guided him. Why was Samuel struggling at the issue? The Bible said the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. When God speaks to a man, it will take a revelation via the workings of the Holy Spirit for that man to discern that is God speaking. And so the issue is, child of God, is God revealed to you? Have you met the man of Calvary? Have you come to know Jesus? You know, if, you've not, if you don't have this relationship with him, even when he's speaking, just like he's speaking even now on this mount, yeah. and speaking in many ages, you know, some of our fathers in God come and talk about the experience with God. Some, some of us, we've been in church and we are wondering, hey, this man saying that he had a discussion with Jesus this morning. These things are real. There was a day we visited our private, I remember, our church visited, and he talked about that he spoke with Jesus this morning. Mm -hmm. I left that house with that word that day, that he communed with Jesus this morning. God wants that experience to be your experience. He wants to reveal himself to you. And I pray you experience him. Amen. My last testimony also, there was a day I was driving and I was running for a meeting uh, in my place of work. And there's a particular route I normally take. For me, that route leads me faster to the office. Because the other route that is conventional, there is normally traffic on Mondays. But that day I was following that route I normally take, the supposed route that would take me faster. I had passed, and the voice of the Lord came, turn back and follow that route that you think is always filled with traffic. I continued again. I heard the voice a second time. I had to turn. I turned back. Lo and behold, brethren, it was as if the Lord went and cleared the way for me. I drove smoothly and got to the office on time. I would have said, based on experience, let me continue in this route. But the voice of the Lord gave me direction that day. Just, God, okay. Okay, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt. You see, one other thing we need to know it is that we grow into understanding how God speaks to us. Yes, sir. You can see for somewhere, when God first called, he thought it was Eli. Second time, Eli. Third time, from experience, this must be the voice of God. Say, also. speak, Lord, your servant listeneth. So when God will call again any other time, he knows how to. So, child of God, we need to grow into yes, knowing how to hear God. It's a growth. It's not... So as you keep growing in the Christian race, you will come to a point where when you hear, you will know that this one is from the Lord. Awesome. You know, there are things you hear. There's a way it will come. The voice will come. You don't need anybody to tell you that this one is from the, is Lord. From the Lord. It may even be something that may not look palatable to you at that time. But because you are now sure that this one, it's not as if we are trying to... Uh, um, box God into a corner that it must be like this or like that. But as we grow, the Bible says, deep call it unto deep. unto deep. So when God speaks in your spirit, you will know that this one is the Lord. Lord that is speaking. Awesome. And then you will obey. I imagine how the Petrarch, Father Abraham, knew when the Lord spoke in Genesis 12 and said, leave your kindred, your household, and go to the land that I will show you. I imagine what would have gone through his yeah. mind as he heard that voice from the Lord. Conclusion. God is forever in the act of communicating to his people in clear or the manner. 
However, we need to be very close to him in prayer. Meditation in his word and through righteous lifestyle to understand the voice of God, discernible from that of Satan. You know why this is important? Satan can even masquerade himself as an yeah. agent of light. Yeah. So we need to grow in, uh, in prayer, meditation in his word, and through righteous lifestyle. That's holy living. Mm -hmm. You cannot hear God when you are not living in holiness. Mm -hmm. To understand that it is the voice of God speaking from us. Distinct from the voice of Satan. Food for thought. The more we move closer to God, the more we hear his voice. You know, when we related the account of servant service, imagine in, in the king's palace, those who serve him. The more they get close to the king, the more they will be able to hear the instruction that is coming from the king. So we need to draw near to him so that he too will draw near to us like the uh, book of James admonishes us. Memory verse, we take it together. First Samuel chapter 3 verse 10, we read together. Now, now the Lord came and stood and called at other times, Samuel, Samuel, and Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant hears. I hope that will be the response and the heart cry of someone today. Lord, more of your voice. Speak, for our hearts are strengthened to hear. For your servant indeed hear it. We are grateful to God for once again he's brought his mind to us. And our commitment, like I always say, is to see that the undiluted word of the Lord is proclaimed to the utmost ends of the earth. Until Jesus comes, we'll be on this beat doing this. We're so grateful to our resource persons whom God has mightily has used to bring his mind our way. Engineer G, thank you for coming and may the Lord continue to preserve you. And may all of his work in your hand will continue to prosper in the name of Jesus. Amen. Engineer Vier, thank you. Thank you too. The Lord will continue to uphold you. Amen. Your labor of love in his vineyard will continue to flourish Amen. until the earth becomes filled with the knowledge of God, even Amen. as the waters covers the sea. Child of God, until I see you again on this side next week, keep on living for Jesus. God bless you.